Hey all, my name is Paul Borowski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan. And what I'd like to do today is introduce you all to how to create a monthly cash budget for a business plan. So what's the purpose of a cash budget? Well, cash budgets are handy for many, many, many reasons. Um, but one of the main reasons is that a cash budget is going to tell you how much money you're going to have at the end of each month for the next 12 months. So for example, if we're going to have a surplus or extra five or $10,000 a month too, well, it's great to know that because then we can go ahead and start planning some expansion projects when we know we're going to have that extra money. In contrast, if we're going to be short money in month nine, then it's great to know that we're going to, um, that we're going to be short money in month nine. It's great to know that in month one, so we can go ahead and line up financing to take care of that deficit. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and let me walk you all through on how to create um, a, a annual cash budget using Excel. Um, but before we get into that, a little bit a um, little bit about me, and then we'll talk about you. We'll talk about your annual cash budgeting needs. Um, so a little bit of ex a little bit about me is I am a professional business plan writer. Um, love to write business plans. Love to write business plan books. Love to write um, company reports, and love love to do cre um, financial models. So if y'all need some help with your annual cash budget or even a business plan, pick up the phone, give me a call, submit a text. Love to assist. If you want some um, read, if you want some books for your reading pleasure on these topics check me out on amazon.com um, just put my my name in the search bar put an mba behind it and boom you're going to have some books um that i've written not only on business plans but also on financial modeling and even you know analyzing um, corporations as well and finally the i am an adjunct professor um for a local college um so and also a subject matter expert in business and finance so i kind of know my stuff um with um doing cash budgets and so on all right so let's go ahead and here is our nice little template that we're going to be working with i've got it labeled right here annual cash budget then i've got our data block here I've got our month one through 12, and then here's the structure that we're gonna follow. So let me go ahead and break these components up for you. First and foremost is gonna be the data block. This is where the general information is going to go. And the general information that we're going to need <clears throat> is going to be our cash sales as a percentage. So for some organizations, and in this particular example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be referencing our company is going to be a bicycle company. We sell bicycles wholesale and we sell bicycles retail. So when we sell bicycles retail, we're going to get cash. When we sell bicycles wholesale, we're going to be sending them to um, different, um, different retailers across the country, and we're going to send them an invoice, and we're not going to get our payments for 30 days. So, you know, that's the um, hypothetical I'm going to be using that we're going to apply to the cash budget. Um, <clears throat> next thing we're going to need to know is our variable cost. So what are our variable costs per bicycle sold? If we have, um, if we sell 10 bicycles this month, well, guess what? We're not going to have any more and um, we're going to be 10 bicycle frames um, short. We're going to be, we're going to be missing 20 tires. We're going to be missing 20 pedals. Um, and so on. So when we sell our variable, um, when we sell our um, raw material like the um, bicycle frames and the tires and the handlebars and so on and so forth, when we sell those, we need to replenish those. And so you know that's what our variable um, distributions are going to be, is going um, is going to be our variable cost that we're going to spend in order to replenish our supplies or whatever those are. Our fixed costs are going to be just straight up um, what our fixed costs are. Um, for just you know keeping the lights on the next thing we need to know in our data block is going to be our starting cash balance so how much money are we starting with in the bank before we even open our doors or before we do our expansion we got to be able to identify that <clears throat> and then finally what are our fixed costs what is the lease um, what are our lease payments what are our um, salaries for management what are the utilities and um, so on and so forth what are our annual um, our monthly advertising costs we're going to lump those all into just one um, one light on um, just to make it um, simple you know for simplicity's sake we're going to call all those line items fixed cost all right so that's our data block next thing we need is going to be our actual template itself i've labeled it here <coughs> excuse me label it here annual cash budget and then we got month one through month 12. and then the only other thing we're really going to need 
is going to be the revenues. We need to know what the revenues are. So once we identify, so we got to be able to project what our revenues are going to be for the next 12 months. Once we know what our revenues are, then the annual cash budget is broken up into three segments. Segment number one is going to be the um, total cash receipts. How much money are we actually bringing in um, for each month? Then it's going to be total cash disbursements. How much money are we actually spending for that month? Then we need to be able to identify what the change in cash is going to be. And then at the end right here is going to be um, what our ending cash balance actually is. All right, so that's the structure of it, our data block. This is our template itself. Let's go ahead and start figuring out how much money we're going to have or not have um, for the um, rest of the year. So the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to do our cash sales. <clears throat> Excuse me. So like, um, so, um, you know, actually, we're going to go ahead and fill in our data block. So for cash sales as a percentage, we're going to say that 70% of our sales are going to be cash. So we're, we're going to have a nice big retail um, store and we're only going to be send, selling 30% of our bicycles um, to other retailers on the wholesale side of our company. The next thing what we need is our variable cost per um, bicycle. So we're going to say our variable costs are 40%. So, you know, the raw material to make a bicycle, it costs about 40% of the sales price. Next thing we need to know is what our starting cash balance is. For this example, we're going to go ahead and say $10,000. And then our fixed costs. What are our monthly fixed costs, our labor costs, our um, utility costs, our lease costs, and so on. And we're going to call our um, fixed cost $10,000 as well. All right, so we've got our data block um, all filled out. We've got our revenues identified. We are now ready to go ahead and break into our three different segments. So segment one is going to be cash sales. So like we said, we decided that 70% um, of our sales are going to be um, cash sales. So the way we calculate this is going to put it is, is to be put an equal sign. We're going to click on our revenues. We're going to hit a multiplication sign. Then we're going to go ahead and hit um, click on the 70%. Hit enter. So what this shows us is that of every $10,000 that we sell, cash sales are going to be $7,000. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to the, um, the bar right here. We're going to double click on that B3 and we're going to hit F4 and then enter. And what that does is it puts a dollar sign in front of the B and it puts a dollar sign in front of the three. So th that locks the cell down. So every um, so what we can do now is we can go ahead and go to the bottom right hand corner and we can drag this across. And so what that does is it multiplies our revenues for each month by the same number of sales at 70%. So now we have each one of our um, cash sales for the next 12 months. The next thing we need to do is identify what our credit sales are going to be. So the wholesale side, like I said, is it's going to take them 30 days to collect their um, invoices. Um, for the bicycle sales. So this means that we are not going to be collecting the remaining of the balance until month two. So to calculate the credit sales from month two, what we're going to do is we're going to take the $10,000 from month one. We're going to subtract from it the cash sales that we had, and that's going to give us credit sales for month two. So the way this works is that our revenues are $10,000. We got $7,000 this month. However, we're not getting the remaining balance, which is the 3000 until next month. So our um, cash coming in next month is going to be an additional $3,000. Once we do that, then we're going to go again to the bottom right hand corner, drag it over, and it has now um, automatically calculated for us what our credit sales are going to be. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to have other sales. I mean, there's going to be a point in time where we might sell something um, that's just, you know, unusual. And so for this particular example, we're going to say that our um, cash, our other sales, we're going to have month five, we're going to have $50,000 in other sales in month five. So now once we're done with that, the next thing we need to do is we need to add up all of our total cash receipts for each month. To do that, we're going to hit an equal sign, type in sum, open up a parenthesis. We're then going to highlight all three cells right here, close the parenthesis and hit enter. Then we're going to do our little trick that we do, um, keep doing, is going to go to the bottom right hand corner to where we see that little um, handy dandy um, plus sign. And we're going to drag that bad boy all the way across. 
that is going to add up each all of our um, cash receipts for the month so now at this point in time we're a third of the way through and we know what our cash receipts are going to be for the next 12 months next thing we need to do is identify some of our costs and to do that first thing we're going to do is our variable cost so like I, like we discussed the variable cost is you know if we're doing a bicycle it's going to be the handlebar how much we pay for the handlebar how much we pay for the little ringy thing that we put on the handlebars how much we pay for the bomb the um, the spinning things, what are those tires, how much we pay for the pedals. Those are all of our variable costs that we need to go ahead and replenish for the next month. So the way to calculate the variable cost distribution, how much we're paying for variable costs, is the equal sign. We're going to click on revenues, multiplication sign, and then we're going to go up here to the variable cost, 40%. Click on that and hit enter. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way up here to that B4, double click on B4, hit F4, Get, we got a dollar sign in front of the B, we got a dollar sign in front of the four, and ba bam, hit enter again. Now we have our variable cost that we're going to be spending each month for the next 12 months. And again, we're going to pull that across as well, grabbing the bottom right hand corner and yanking. All right, next thing is going to be our fixed disbursements, our fixed cost. We're going to hit our equal sign and we're going to click on fixed cost and hit enter. Then we're going to go into month two. Hit equal sign again and click that $10,000. Hit enter again. Then we're going to drag that bottom right hand corner, drag it all the way over. And now we've got all of our fixed costs for the next 12 months. Other distribution, I like to put for other distribution, I like to put the taxes. I mean, everybody's got to pay taxes, right? And for the most part, you're going to be paying those quarterly. Everybody, um, everybody's pay tax, and we're going to um, pay these taxes quarterly. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some um, money in here for taxes for other di um, disbursements. So we're going to say it's going to be fifteen thousand dollars in month three, ten thousand dollars in month six, and then month nine we're going to pay another fifteen thousand dollars, and then in month twelve we're going to pay ten thousand dollars. All right, so now we've got all of our um, taxes paid in other disbursements. So now what we have to do is we've got to total up how much money we're going to be kicking out on a monthly basis. The way to do that is we're going to go into the cell right next to total cash disbursements, hit an equal sign, and we're going to highlight all three cells. Actually, no, we're not. I'm sorry. We're going to hit an equal sign. We're going to type in sum and open the parenthesis. Then we're going to highlight all three cells. We're going to close our parenthesis and hit enter. So this tells us how much money we are going to spend every month. We're going to go to the bottom right hand corner, make sure that the cursor turns to a plus sign and we're going to drag that bad boy all the way across again. And so now we're uh, two thirds of the way done. We know how much money we're going to be getting every month. We now know how much money we're going to be spending every month. The next step is going to be figuring out the cash change. To do that, we're going to go um, pretty much right next to net change during the month. We're going to click on the cell right next to that label, hit an equal sign. Then we're going to click on our total cash receipts and we're going to subtract from our total cash receipts how much money we're spending, our total cash disbursements, and hit enter. So this tells us that we're going to be short $7,000 for this month. Next thing we're going to do is go to the bottom right hand corner and we're going to drag that bad boy all the way across again. So just looking at this real quick, it looks like um, it's showing that. Um, so that tells us how much money we're going to how much um, the net change during the month for cash. The next step we need to do is now identify how much cash we're going to have at the beginning of every month. In order to do that, we're going to hit our equal sign. We're going to then go up here and click on starting cash balance and hit enter. <clears throat> All right. So next thing we're going to do is the final step, which is going to be ending cash. How much money are we going to have at the end of the month? In order to calculate that, we're going to hit the equal sign. We're going to click on net change during the month. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add that money to the beginning cash and hit enter. So this tells us that um, if we are short $7,000 um, for the net cash change during the month and we have $10,000 in checking account already, 
then our ending cash balance is going to be 3000 Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. What we're now going to do, the ending cash balance for month one will always be the same amount for the beginning cash balance of the next month. And then what we'll do is we're going to drag this over here. And so what this does now is we're going to take our cash change, which is $500. So we got an additional $500 from month two. Our beginning cash from month two was $3,000. We add that $3,000 to the um, amount change, which is $500. That now gives us an ending cash balance of $500. Once we have that structure set up, we're going to highlight both cells, bottom right hand corner and drag. Once we do that, we can now identify where our cash shortage is going to be. And specifically where a cash shortage is going to be is going to be in month three. So in month three, <clears throat> for example, we have our revenues here of $30,000. Total cash receipts for the month three is $28,500. We're paying out $37,000 in month three though. That gives us a net change of a negative $8,500. We're starting the month with $3,500. So we're going to add that $3,500 to the negative $8,500. This tells us that we are going to be short $5,000 for month three. So it's kind of nice to know that in month one, we're going to be running a little bit short on money in month three. However, if we take a look at this a little bit further, we identify right here in month five, we start making a whole bunch of money. So in month five, we're going to have ending cash balance of 62,000. That's going to jump up here to month eight. We're going to have $118,000. So this also tells us we need to start planning some expansion projects starting in month five or ending in month five. And we also need to plan another expansion project, probably close to month eight. So, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a lot of um, great things that we're going to be able to identify once we have the annual cash budget. We can identify when we're going to need to make do. Um, we're able to identify when we're going to need financing. We're also able to identify when we're going to be able to do some expansion projects as well. So hopefully this information was helpful and it gives you a little bit of an insight on how to create a annual cash budget. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so let's go ahead and sum this up. Um, so when you're doing an annual cash budget, make sure to follow the, you know, this kind of a template. Um, if you try to just you know, do one on your own, it could get a little bit confusing, especially towards the end when you're trying to figure out your, your beginning cash balance and your ending cash balance. So it can get a little bit complex. So you know, like I said, make sure you follow a proven template. Um, if you want me, you know, if you want one of my templates, you know, I do sell the annual um, cash budget template you know, for you know, for a price. So just, you know, if you want one, contact me. I'd be delighted to go ahead and sell, sell you one. Um, and also, if you need help, go ahead and do a customized annual cash budget. Also contact me as well. All right. And um, that's the end of the um, little video. Hopefully it was insightful and have a fantastic day. If the video was good, um, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you.